the internet was a double-edged sword. It gave us many benefits, many positive aspects, but at the same time, opened the door for many problems we didn't have to deal with before. And usually, the positives and the negatives come together in a bundle. We now have the ability to speak to people we would never even know existed through the internet, but now it is also easier than ever to find information about that person and spread around to others to ruin their day. We also have the ability to download anything to our computers, tools we can use to help us in our online world. But if you get them from the wrong place, you can end up with a computer virus. I, I, I don't think I need to tell people what a computer virus is, do I? Most people don't know how they work. In fact, most of the time, I don't know how they work. But everyone knows they spell trouble. Be it malware, spyware, adware, ransomware, wear hair. Nobody wants a computer virus. Whether it be stealing your data and selling it, or locking your computer down until you pay the people who made the virus, they come in all shapes and sizes. So yes, computer viruses are dangerous, yada yada, etc, etc. I don't feel the need to explain something you probably already know. While all viruses are harmful, some of which have costed billions of dollars in damage, the coding knowledge used in some of these is impressive, and sometimes they got real creative with it. Nothing like having my personal data stolen by a purple monkey, but we can go even further than that. Why don't we have a video dedicated to some of the oddest computer viruses out there? D disclaimer. Please don't seek any of these out unless you know what you're doing. Even I'm too much of a coward. That's why I'm using a bunch of different sources for this video. All viruses are harmful in some way. This is purely for documentation and entertainment purposes. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me introduce you all to- Oh. Oh, it seems I have a, uh, I have a uh, Windows 98 message on my screen, despite using Windows 10. I guess that means the purple monkey's taking over. Let me introduce you all to the strangest computer viruses ever created. A big shout out to everyone's favorite Indian Canadian, Mudahar, for his old virus investigation series. It helped a lot with the research and explanation of some of these, and helped me learn of the more interesting viruses. I've tried my hardest to put my own spin on some of these, so I'm not just copying him word for word, and I hope I succeeded. Now, what's our first topic? Sonic Jazzer Battle. <laughs> Sonic's the name, speeds my game! Oh look, something Sonic the Hedgehog related showing up in a Magic Watch video? Never seen that before. Yeah, I've milked Sonic the Hedgehog pretty hard on my channel, and let me tell you, hedgehog milk is delicious. But yes, even in the world of computer viruses, Sonic shows his face once more. And of course, I'm gonna talk about it. Sonic Gather Battle was a fan game made back in 2014, made by a guy named Lamina Dan. It's garnered a reputation of being a pretty fun and addicting fan game and had a following for it, and it would be updated throughout the years to add some new content and features, all that jazz. All that would change in December of 2017. A new update was made to add in an anti-cheat feature, you know, to prevent people from doing stuff they shouldn't be doing in-game. Seems pretty self-explanatory. Except the fact, this wasn't some simple anti-cheat people started noticing there was more to this than meets the eye. The game started doing weird things to their computer after this update was made. For some strange reason, the game wanted administration access to your PCs. Never give a program administrator privileges. Never. It is the worst thing you can do. It's like literally handing somebody the keys to your fucking house, your car, your very vital possessions, and letting them do whatever they want with it. Don't give them administrator privileges. If you ran a cheat engine while the game was open, it would kill the cheat engine's process, and then your entire game got all dark and spooky. So -ro -so -ro -ho Oh, I get it. It's like all those fake anti-piracy screens that were all over YouTube a few years ago. I, I, I'm gonna get jump scared by some demonic Sonic or something. Well, even though this is neat in concept, unbeknownst to the person playing, you have just activated the full extent of the game's DRM, which basically serves as a virus. Because you allowed the game administration access, the DRM is now on your PC, permanently, 
It does not matter if you delete the game and everything associated with it, that DRM is staying on your computer. Even if you transfer over to a new PC, the DRM with Sonic Gather Battle stays with it. And you're probably wondering, well, what exactly does that mean, the DRM stays with it even if you uninstall it? If you try googling something like Sonic Gather Battle Cheats, the DRM automatically closes your web browser. This thing is here just to spawn you and make sure you don't do anything naughty and if you don't even have the game anymore. But that's not all. If this wasn't enough, the minute the DRM activates, it steals your IP address and ships it off to the game's creator and adds you to a list. Yeah, if you do anything to mess with Sonic Gather Battle in any way, your information is stolen and you're put on the creator's naughty list. The only way to get any of this removed is to go to the developer himself and tell him why you don't deserve to be on the list and get him to remove all the DRM from your computer. If you didn't know, this is all sorts of illegal. And what is, it, what is this all over? Why did he put all this effort to steal your information if you cheated in the game? The punishment does not fit the crime. I don't deserve to have spyware on my computer while simultaneously having my IP address sent to some Sonic fanboy in his mid-30s because I activated a cheat engine in a Sonic fan game. Well, the actual reason was found out to be because of Dan's sprite edits. He, uh, he didn't want people stealing his sprites that he edited. Edited, not created. So he put a virus in his fan game that stole your IP address and spied on you so people wouldn't steal them. Well, why are Sonic fans like this? After this news broke out, the creator was basically mocked left and right. He got banned from the biggest Sonic fan game event and he deleted almost all of his accounts on basically everything. And the creator has all but vanished from everything and shut down the game's servers. Well, maybe it's for the best. Gotta go straight to prison for stealing IP addresses! Ransomware. Now, not all viruses were made for monetary reasons. Sometimes, some viruses were made for fun. Just some coders wanted to flex their coding skills and see if they could make their own virus. They usually don't have any malicious intent and warn people what they're getting into before they download them. Vark Skeletor, aka Joel from Vine Sauce, had people make meme viruses for him for his Windows destruction videos. You lost? Uh oh. Oh no, no. No, no. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> On a completely different note, Toho is a game series that started all the way back in 1997. Most of Toho's games consisted of bullet hell shooters that were notoriously difficult, but ever since then it spawned several different games and spin-offs that have branched out into different genres. I have admittedly never played a single game from the To Wow How series, but its fan base is huge and dedicated. R really dedicated. There are dozens of Tuha Hoo related fan sites and communities out there, more than you would think. You look up anything relating to the series, and you'll find yourself in a rabbit hole. Trust me. One of the many fans of Tuha decided for complete funsies to create a virus based off of the series. A Twaha themed virus, and it was named Rensenware. In 2017, a Toe Chicka Wow Wow fan made this virus just because he wanted to, and it was a form of ransomware. If you got it on your computer, all your files were now encrypted, and the only way to get them back was not to pay a sum of money, but instead get 200 million points into Wow Wow Web Z12 on the hardest difficulty. As you can imagine, this is no easy task since these games are bullet hell shooters and are extremely difficult. And if you can't do it, well, tough luck. Your files have been taken by an anime girl. Apparently, I'm not sure if this is confirmed true or not, right after the creator made this joke virus, he went straight to bed. When he woke up, he infected a dozen or so Toucan Sam fans' computers, and even his own. Despite making the virus, he couldn't even get the score needed to unlock his own computer. And as fast as he could, he started developing the tools needed to unlock the ransomware for himself and a bunch of other people's computers. He later apologized to all of them for all the trouble he caused with this joke virus. This is what happens when someone plays with the fire for fun, and he ends up getting himself and others burned. <laughs> he didn't have any real ill intentions, he was just bored. But at least this one didn't get too out of hand. I do wonder if any actual Wonton fans actually managed to get their files back just like the virus wanted, but that would require me to actually seek out those fans, and sadly, I know nothing about Toonami or how any of that series works. Oh well. I sure hope I got the name right. Bitcoin blackmailer. 
Some viruses out there are not subtle in the slightest about their intentions. They know what they're doing is incredibly heinous, and sometimes they play into that. Have you ever wanted to have your computer infected by a virus, and that a horror movie villain is the one holding your files hostage? Well, that can happen, and it did. One of the most famous horror franchises from the 2000s was Saw. A bunch of movies about a bunch of people getting captured and tortured, and needing to find a way out of the situation. This is all, of course, orchestrated by John Kramer, or as he's most well known by, Billy the Puppet. Billy would taunt the victims he's trapped in his little games and explain the rules to them, but all these in-depth traps and torture devices cost a lot to make, so Billy has fallen on some hard times because of it, so he's resorted to making appearances in ransomware viruses. Originally named Bitcoin Blackmailer, when you downloaded this virus, you'd get jump scared by Billy here. And let me just go ahead and establish this. This isn't some tie-in to the Saw movies or some ARG or ad campaign. This was completely unofficial, and it wasn't a joke or to be funny. This thing legit locked down your computer and all your files on it. Billy would give you instructions on what to do. Convert $150 in USD to Bitcoin and send it to the virus makers. Every hour, more and more files would be deleted, and after 72 hours, the whole PC would be wiped. Try anything funny and the computer has several safety measures to delete your files. Okay, so they know they've got you by the balls here. For those who don't know why they want exclusively Bitcoin, Bitcoin can be sent discreetly across the web by making it easier for someone to cover their tracks. So the creators of the hack were able to get away with the money without being traced. And it's been reported that even if you paid them the full sum of money, they still wouldn't give you the decryption key, so they just took the money and ran for the hell of it. Billy was just a lying bastard. The virus would later spread around enough where different variations of it started being spotted, including the Joker and even Pennywise. Imagine having your files being taken by Pennywise the Clown. Come on, man, I, I just want my picture of Linky Kong holding a glass of chocolate milk back. Well, you better let the poor guy out! <laughs> that whole thing about him saying not to try anything funny? Well, it turns out he was just bluffing. It was later discovered that the encryption software was extremely simple and very easy to bypass if you knew a bit about encrypting. Eventually, a bunch of coding vigilantes started making their own decrypting software to bypass this virus and started spreading them out to the public, pretty much making this virus obsolete. You may be good at trap making, Billy, but you suck at coding. Don't quit your day job. We got a two-for-one deal this time. Viruses involving cute little Japanese animals. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Blah blah blah, Pokemon, late 90s, cultural phenomenon, it was everywhere, you, you know the story. Pokemon infiltrated every single corner of the globe in the late 90s, and if you were online in the year 2000, it could infiltrate your computer. The Pikachu Worm, as it was called, was an email virus that would link you to a website called Pikachu.com, disguising itself as an official Pokemon website. When you clicked on the link, it would send you to a complete duplicate of the official Pokemon website, but downloaded an .exe file in the background, and then sent the same link to every person in their contacts list. If you clicked on the executable from this point forward, it would send a line of code to delete your PC's operating system. So this would be a nasty little virus if you lit it on your computer. And well, uh, that's the thing. It would be a nasty little virus, and not for the fact that whoever coded this virus forgot to override the system's double-checking command. So when it's about to delete the OS, it asks you first if you want to delete the operating system beforehand. Yes, this is the only virus I can think of that asks for consent before screwing up your computer. Of course, any person with any semblance of tech knowledge is going to say no. This virus was very clearly preying on the phenomenon of Pokemon at the time, and was most likely aimed at kids who knew next to nothing about how viruses worked. The thing is, though, most kids back in the year 2000 didn't really have email accounts. That was mostly an adult thing, if I recall correctly. And most adults back then were probably sick of Pokemon at this point, so they probably didn't even click on the email in the first place. So that's two bars of entry it had to pass to even be effective. And, uh, well, it wasn't. Nobody even knows the origins of this virus. It's a complete mystery, and thus, this virus was quickly forgotten. And so we move on. Let's jump forward a decade to 2010, and another virus pops up. A virus known as the Ikitako virus infects thousands of computers in a short amount of time. The virus disguised itself as a music file, and then when opened, it would convert all of your files on the drive into pictures of a cartoon octopus. Anime was a mistake. Yeah, this virus didn't steal your info or delete System32 or anything like that. It legit just replaced all files 
with a cartoon octopus. Obviously, this was just meant to piss people off than anything truly malicious. The police in Japan were able to track down the guy who made it, and it turns out he was just flexing his coding skills and this was the end result. He got two years in prison. Twice a Japanese cartoon creature was involved in a virus that was just meant to cause chaos and nothing else, and both ten years apart from each other. I have no clue if another one happened in 2020, but we were already dealing with a different cute creature virus that came from Asia that year, so I think we'll pass on that. Lord knows what 2030 holds. There's been a lot of gaming-themed viruses here today. I'm well aware of that. I guess it's just my inner gamer that finds the idea of viruses being game-based weird. Yeah, I'm a little biased. So, why not another one? This one sends fear into the hearts of who know it. You can run, run for more than... Whoa. Oh! What the hell is that? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the hell? In 2012, the height of spooky horror games like Slender and all was going around. Games with very little gameplay, but ooh, they were spooky. A game in similar vein showed up on the V-Boards of Fortune of all places. It was called Lostboy.exe. The game had you play as, well, a lost boy in a huge maze with a bunch of demonic images and spooky atmosphere. The goal of the game was to reach the exit. But to my knowledge, nobody has ever found an exit because there isn't one. You see, the whole game was a red herring because right along with the game was a nice little surprise. A remote access trojan or a rat virus. This is the worst kind of virus you can get on your computer. If you get this virus, then the person behind it gets full access to your computer and can steal your personal info, turn on your webcam, among other things. And that's exactly what happened here. People in the V-Thread started downloading the game, blissfully unaware it had a rat virus on it, and started having their personal data stolen. And the guy who was stealing all the data, he started posting all the Anon's personal info and bank statements, and started emailing them pictures of themselves he took from their webcams. Word got out to the admins, and the guy was banned, and the whole board was shut down for a bit, before coming back online with a message, Don't click on random download links, you dumbasses! And everything was back to normal. Mostly. Important to note, the game was originally made by a random dude who just wanted to make a spooky game similar to Slender. He uploaded it to V himself for attention, but then someone else took his game, snuck a rat virus in it, and impersonated him, and started spreading the game around himself, and then it got the infamy it did. Honestly, I feel bad for the original dev. He just wanted to make a spooky game. If he only knew his game now lives in infamy as that 4chan horror game that stole your bank account and credit card number. The original creator did an interview with a YouTuber a couple of months ago. I'll link it in the description. But I hope you can speak big again. Then let's hand. Man, all these viruses. Stealing my info and breaking into my bank account. We need something to clean it all up with. We need to get the best antivirus there is to take care of all of them. Windows Defender? Nah. Norton Antivirus? Too expensive. We need to get an antivirus from the most trustworthy country when it comes to cybersecurity on the planet. India. Do not read This is Protogen, an antivirus made to snuff out those nasty viruses. Now, despite popular belief and the fact it's from India, this is a real antivirus software. It's not a virus disguised as an antivirus. This thing tries to clean your computer of viruses. Keyword, tries. Just because it's an actual antivirus doesn't mean it's a good one. People have tested it on multiple computers full of viruses and have barely caught any of them. Up until this point, it's only detected one, when there should have at least been three, maybe four detections out of it. So it, 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 it has a 25% success rate within the given samples that we've given it, which are definitely found by every other bit of antivirus engine that I put through. A, 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 more, uh, a more known antivirus engine. So maybe this isn't the best antivirus to use. But being a good antivirus isn't what Protogen is known for. Far from it. What it's known for is its marketing. The mascot of Protogen is Proto, and he's a stolen asset from a toddler show named Super Y. To my knowledge, nobody has ever taken any legal action over what is a blatant recolor OC donut steal. But actually, Proto is superior to the original because does Super Y have this? I 
I am Proto. Your security is my motto. Install me on your computer to protect your data better. With me, there are no viruses. Could enter your computer. Malware, spyware, Trojan. All gone forever. If your antivirus doesn't have a rap song, is it even an antivirus? This is what this antivirus is well known for. Because this is more entertainment than any virus or antivirus can give me. The people who put this together deserve a medal. I'm pro 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 Preventing data theft is my motto. I prevent data leakage, securing your business and image. Oh, and there's more too. There's even more commercials. Oops, my system crashed. I lost my data, but I had an antivirus. Antivirus is not enough. You need Protegent, world's only antivirus with data recovery software. Think beyond antivirus, think Protegent. Okay, so Protegent may be a crappy antivirus, but come on, this is... This is adorable. They put together all these commercials and everything to show off their stolen mascot. It might not do its job, but you have to admire the passion. I am Proto, bringing families closure is my motto. I protect your kids while they surf. As I know that parenting is tough. This is still going on to this day. New commercials are still being made and their website is still up. And I think these commercials are the sole reason why. Because I don't think Windows Defender is shaking in its boots over the actual product. Bad product, but amazing marketing. Proton not only save you from accidents, it also save your computer from viruses and online threats. Think beyond antivirus, think Protogen. At the end of the day, viruses are still universally bad. Nobody wants them. But the creativity in some of these is just insane. They put this much effort into something just to break the law or to mess with some people. The thing is, I probably missed a whole slew of weird viruses. Maybe I'll come back to this topic someday. Who knows? Only thing I know is to not go out of my way to seek these out. Ain't that right, you purple bastard? God bless, like and subscribe, and good night. Stay safe, and now your credit card number belongs to me. You wanna play a little game? <laughs>